Baskin Rudwala is one of the most beloved creatures in Pauper. Thanks to its madness ability, it can be cast for free with the help of other cards, such as Faithless Looting, Wild Mongrel, and Scrap War Mod, that can help to put multiple Wallas in play at once for very cheap. The same is true for spells like Fiery Temper, Scopus River, and Blood Mad Vampire, which also have madness. Here Dave as a powerful attacker, Burning Tree Emissary for faster starts, and Boldaren Epicure as another madness enabler, are other creatures that play well with Baskin Rudwalla in a Gruul Madness deck that is ready to exploit their potential. But, will it be enough to beat the top decks of the meta? Let's find out. Pulling on to 6 on the first game and kept a decent hand against Burn. They play a turn 2 Curse of Pierce Heart and a follow up with a Wild Mongrel. They proceed to cast Monastery Swift Spear and try to kill my dog. Still, I decided it was worth keeping it around, so I discarded a mod and the Vampire to the Mongrel's ability which also stopped my opponent from attacking. I used the inert ability on my mod to discard my fiery temper. And as a bonus tip, here's the kind of effect you get when you pair the madness ability with some of the other cards. Anyway, I got rid of their creature, attack and got ahead in the race. They played two burn spells and passed. On my turn, I attacked with the mongrel and I discarded the madness creatures to play them for cheap, while growing my dog to deal more damage. They sacrificed their synthesizer and got rid of one of my creatures. I decided to remove their creature and attack to get ahead in the race again. They used their fire blast to kill the vampire, and now I can play a Voldaren Epicure to loot away my spare land for better cards. They play an Epicure of theirs and passed, and on my turn I decided to discard a mod with the mongrel to cast it for its owner cost, and attack for the win. For Cyborg, the idea is to use Cram Session as a looting enabler that can give us life. They play a Monastery Swiss Spear and attack, and instead of killing it on my turn I decided to play a tap land and pass instead of killing it right away. I got punished for this, as I took 3 more damage I shouldn't have. They filled the board with 2 creatures and I decided not to mess around this time and kill the most dangerous one. They revealed 2 Bulldaring Epicures that were coming down next turn, so I needed to start closing distances. They just played the vampires and on my turn I played the mod first to see if I could find something I could use before attacking while casting my Walla for free. I attacked with all my creatures and they refused to block meaning they plan to kill me on their turn. They got rid of my, my mod, put me down to 2 life points and finished me off with a lightning bolt. I took a mulligan on the final game but kept a decent hand. I played a Voldaring Epicure while they played a lightning bolt at the end of my turn and they took care of my creature with a Therian Blaze that also took a chunk of my life points. I played 2 creatures and passed but they took care of one of them again. I loot the Scopus River to draw another card and attack. They start to play cards and reveal a fire blast. So I decided it was time to use Cram Session and gain for life while looting away a Baskin Rudwala to cast it for free. I attacked to close the distance and the opponent just cast the fire blast against me and passed. I shot the lightning bolt to their face at the end of their turn to pressure them more and put them down to 3, enough to secure the win in match number 1. Match number 2 will be against a series of familiars a combo deck that relies on controlling the board on an early turns to lock opponents out of the game later. I kept an acro hand not knowing the match, as I had a failless looting to pair well with my fiery tempers. I decided to wait until I had enough mana to cast 3 spells, and I could draw 2 extra cards without losing value. They played a gold Pharos faithful, and from there, I knew it was an uphill battle. Then, they played a creature and passed, and now with the help of faithless looting, the plan was to kill their creature and resolve a Scopus River. They managed to save their creature, but I was able to get through at least with one of mine. They replayed their creature and passed the turn, and on mine, I cast Faithless Looting from the graveyard to get rid of the extra lands while casting a Walla for free. I then attacked, putting them down to 6, and post combat, I played 2 extra creatures with one of them getting countered. They play a Muldrifter and drew 2 more cards, and back in my turn, I play another Faithless Looting to find answers against their board. I managed to resolve a Vampire, and the only creature that could attack was the River and they chump block it with the Mold Drifter. They managed to resolve a Sunscape Familiar and a second Mold Drifter, and on my turn I decided to make a big attack, and they survived by casting a Ghostly Flicker who saved the Mold Drifter and allowed them to drop two more cards. They untap, play an Archaeomancer, and found the line to gain infinite life, so I considered. Moving to game number 2, I decided to bring in 3 Pyroblast, while trimming some other harder cards to cast. I kept a strong hand, with a turn 1 Cured Ape into a turn 2 Scrap Work Mod, plus a Baskin Rudwala. They played a God Forest Faithful, so I decided to attack with everything, but they managed to kill my Cured Ape. That turn right, letting me play 
burning three emissary and an extra creature. They play a land and pass, and it was my turn again to make a huge swing. Post combat, I tried to kill the gods Pharaoh's Faithful with Fiery Temper, but they were able to protect it. They play a Modern Age, and back on my turn, I had no other option but to attack and put them down to four. They didn't find anything on their turn, so they died on my next attack, leading to a final game. I kept a risky hand on the game number three, hoping to find an extra land as I was on the draw. I got rewarded, but I will just play a land and pass. I tried to kill Ghost Pharaoh's Faithful on their turn, but they managed to protect it with a Hydroblast. At least I was able to cast a Walla for free. So on my turn, I just played the Bounce land and pass. They did the same, but thanks to the Burning Tree Emissary, I can play three creatures cards in a row to apply more pressure to them. In my turn, after they passed, I swung with everything and discarded all my Wallas to pawn my Mongrel and deal more damage. Unfortunately, they bounced it, but at least I can play it again now. A second God's Pharaoh's Faithful joins the party and things are not looking great. However, the Wallas were angry and I managed to deal 10 damage in one swing thanks to them. They played an Archaeomancer returning a snap to their hand, but they made the wrong blocks and I was able to steal the win by pumping the Wallas and discarding the rest of my hand to grow my Mongrel. The final match is against Jeska Ephemerate, a powerful deck that relies on cleansing wildfire to ram them ahead in the game to cast bigger spells. Still, I was able to play 3 creatures by turn 2 while they were still setting up, so I was able to push a lot of damage very early in the game. I play a lightning bolt to their face to pressure their life total more and attack with the party back on my turn, putting them down to 3 life. After I tried to kill their creature on their turn and play the Baskin Rugala for free, they decided to consume. Post Cyborg, 3 Pyroblasts should be enough, and I thought about adding the Glamours to deal with their lands, but I think those should be better on the plate rather than on the draw. I play a Cure Deep followed by a Wild Mongrel, but sadly they managed to kill the Monkey. I decided to play a second Mongrel instead of the Post River to use Faithless Looting and gain value from it. They play Cleansing Wildfire and Pass, and now I can play the Looting and add a body to the board and deal some extra damage to them. Next, they play the Muldrifter and Blink it with Ephemerate. Since they refused to block on my turn, I could deal 10 damage in one swing while adding an extra body to the board. They play an Agur of Bolas, revealing a scred that dealt with the river. Still, I could swing at them with the pack and was okay to trade my dog for their flyer, as I didn't want to pump it and run into removal. I then cast two creatures and passed while my opponent kept finding answers. They untap, cast a preordain to later try and kill my creature with Hydroblast. I decided it was worth saving it, but they had a counter spell of their own. Still, this exchange was okay as now they are almost tapped out. I tagged with both dogs and went for pumping one dog to get past the Augur of Bolas. They then played an Archaeomancer, cast a Brainstorm and considered when they did not find any answers for my creature. Now if you are new to Pauper and want to test other cool decks, click into that playlist. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.